I'm a self-taught woodworker, and when I first got started, there were already some great videos on the internet. But learning the craft with videos, it isn't perfect. You'll often find one amazing video that shows a tool or a technique in the perfect level of detail. But then, when you go to find out more about that idea, get a deeper dive, you might not find any more quality videos on that topic. So, a lot of us go out and get a book. And most of us will come home with some enormous doorstop of a book titled something like Uncle Leroy's Complete Encyclopedia of Woodwork and Craftsmanship and Furniture Making for the Modern Shop. Not only are these huge everything in the kitchen sink books kind of tiring, they're also fairly useless. They're more like catalogs. You don't really learn a lot from them, you just sort of flip through and see all the different possibilities that exist. We pretty much all start with one of these books, but once you're done sort of browsing through, it's time to move on to better, more informative books that are actually going to help you progress in the craft. Now, when I started this video, I was originally going to recommend five books that I think are really helpful, but instead, I think I'm going to talk about five types of books. Five different approaches to woodworking that are really going to get you the results you need with the minimum time and investment. Because as much as I love reading, wouldn't we all rather be making stuff? Once you've read your first huge book on everything about woodworking, it's good to move on to books that cover a single topic in a really tight level of detail. A good example of this is Making and Mastering Wooden Planes by David Fink. This book takes a small topic, Making Wooden Planes in the Krenov style, and covers every aspect. Fink doesn't just explain how to design and make these planes. He also goes into incredible depth on how to tune up all the tools you need to make these planes a success. The book covers everything from setting up a block plane to compensating for drift in your bandsaw cuts. Some of these topics, they seem a little superfluous to actual plane making, but Fink understands that these things are all related, and he has to cover the whole system of plane making if you're going to be a success. The way I measure the success of a book like this is that when it was done, I turned around and made my first plane, and it worked. This book actually got me to succeed, and this should be the goal of every woodworking book, but I'm not sure that it actually is. Now, Making and Mastering Wooden Planes was out of print for a while, but it's recently been reprinted, and I've got a link to it down in the description. Now, these single topic books are fantastic, but you also want to read some books that cover woodworking as a complete system. There's no technique or idea that exists in isolation. Everything's in a context, where the craftsman fits into his environment in some way. So, for instance, you might read Toshio Orate's Japanese Woodworking Tools, Their Tradition, Spirit, and Use. On the surface, this book looks like just a discussion of planes and saws and chisels in the Japanese tradition. But the author is a classically trained craftsman, and he can't talk about these tools without talking about the whole culture of Japanese carpentry. He goes into huge detail about Japanese shop practice, which uses incredibly basic work holding and doesn't even have a bench as we would recognize it in the Western tradition. Odete also goes into fascinating detail on the Japanese apprenticeship system, and he clearly explains how a young man could slowly become a respected craftsman. You might pick up a book like this, thinking that you wanted to add a single Japanese plane to your collection. But by the end, you would probably have a bunch of ideas on how you could make your workspace more flexible and efficient, how you could sharpen more effectively, and how you might pursue the study of your craft. My other favorite book in this style is Joshua Klein's Hands Employed Aright. It's a biography of Jonathan Fisher, a country carpenter who worked in rural Maine in the late 17 and early 1800s. Fisher did his work as a side hustle because his main job as a minister didn't pay enough to support his family. He had a shop tucked away in the corner of his barn, had mediocre tools that he often made himself, worked totally alone, and still managed to make a huge variety of furniture pieces and sell them for enough money to keep his kids fed. Sound familiar? Fisher is basically the 18th century version of most home woodworkers I know. He was working in a small, out-of-the-way shop, 
without enough light, without enough tools, and without a lot of money. But he still managed, by himself, to produce tons of different stuff, all the way from raw lumber, through design, joinery, finishing, and all the way to delivery and getting paid by the customer. It's easy to think that somebody who was working hundreds of years ago doesn't have anything to teach the modern craftsperson, but I was a full-time custom builder for years, and my life was shockingly similar to Fisher's. We were pretty much the same person, I just had some plug-in tools and he didn't. So when I read that book, I learned a ton about how to conduct a business, how to keep it profitable, how to be efficient. It wasn't just a dry historical text, it was incredibly useful because it covered the whole system of woodwork and the society that the craftsman was functioning in. And that's extremely valuable. Once you've been woodworking for a while, you might find yourself slowly drifting away from how-to books. You'll have your basic techniques together, you'll have the processes that you like to use when you work. And at this point, you start thinking about some of the bigger questions in the craft, like tradition and design and developing your own style. When I start thinking about these questions, I like to look at furniture catalogs. Now, these aren't the kind of catalogs where you look to buy things and have them shipped to your house. These are collections of historical furniture pieces, and they're usually put out by big-time collectors or researchers or museums, and they're just a wealth of information about actual furniture pieces and what they've looked like over the centuries. Here's my favorite catalog. It's called The Pine Furniture of Early New England. Honestly, this is one of my favorite woodworking books in general, even though it doesn't talk about tools or show even a single woodworking technique. What this book does have is hundreds of pictures of real furniture that was made quickly and inexpensively, used in the homes of real people, and lasted hundreds of years. If you want to build a chest, this book has dozens of examples in all sorts of styles. And once you've been woodworking for a while, you'll be able to basically look at a picture of something and understand how it's constructed. Especially since this book was written by a knowledgeable author who includes some very useful notes about joinery, stock selection, and finishing. Some of the pieces in this book are too complicated to understand at a glance, but most of them are very straightforward, and you could probably build a lot of them just from looking at the pictures. All of the objects in books like these can make a really great starting place, either for making a reproduction or for making your own work in your own style. You're also going to want to read some books that challenge your assumptions about woodworking. This is going to sound a little bit weird, but woodworking is not a craft. It's dozens of crafts that are only loosely related to one another in that they use wood as their central material. Cabinet making, carving, turning, inlay, veneering, chair making, box making, and cooperage are all technically woodwork, but they don't have very much to do with one another. I'm a decent furniture maker and a decent turner, but I've never carved anything, and I couldn't make a barrel if you paid me money. So every once in a while, I try to read a book about a radically different approach to woodworking, something that makes me question all of my assumptions. My favorite is Make a Chair from a Tree by John Alexander. This book has blown a whole lot of people's minds over the years, and I'm not exaggerating. This is a furniture making book where you won't need to go to the lumber yard even once. You won't need any boards, any power tools, and the wood you use won't even be dry. Alexander literally shows you how to take a living oak tree and turn it into a lovely and comfortable chair. And you'll do all your work while the wood is still green. And no, it's not going to warp or crack or do anything else, because Alexander is using such effective traditional methods that the usual things we fear aren't even a problem. Once you see how you can make real furniture out of firewood, you might never look at the craft the same way again. Now, Alexander's original book has been out of print for a long time, and Alexander recently passed away. But before she did, she co-authored this updated version called Make a Joint Stool from a Tree with Peter Follinsby, who's another really respected traditional woodworker. Now, this book uses the joint stool instead of the chair as its main object, but it covers all the same techniques and ideas, and all the same tools, but it's a bigger, better photographed, full-color book with all the same information. It's still in print, and you can order a copy right now. I also think that you need a handful of reference books on your shelf. These aren't the sort of books that you're going to read 
cover to cover. They're collections of information that you pull down once in a while when you need a correct answer to a really specific question. I've got two favorites in this category. The first is With the Grain, A Craftsman's Guide to Understanding Wood by Christian Bexivort. This book covers the basic anatomy of a tree and the different surfaces you find in a piece of wood. It also explains how wood is harvested, sawn, and dried. This is all vital information, but the part I really like is the author's long list of common North American trees. Each species gets a brief but thorough description that covers the tree, the wood, its color, its density, its workability, and its decay resistance. I do most of my work with five or six species, so every time I run across something new, I pull down this book and get all the relevant facts at a glance. Now I know a lot of you are wondering why we need any reference books when we have the glory of the internet right at our fingertips. Well, it's because a lot of the information on the internet is crap and it's wrong. And when you've got a specific question that's stopping you from finishing a project, you need to get the straight dope right away from somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. For instance, we all get a little confused about finishes sometimes. Polyurethane? Wipe on polyurethane. Polyurethane? Wipe on polyurethane. There's just so much uh, chemistry. When I need to understand an unfamiliar finish, I go straight to Bob Flexner's Understanding Wood Finishing. This book has been the standard reference for years, and for good reason. The author understands his topic thoroughly, and he includes just the right amount of detail. He tells you what you need to know, but he doesn't get lost in the weeds. I can usually spend a few minutes reading this book and save myself hours of frustration down the line. There are lots of other great reference books out there, so when you find one, just buy it and stick it on the shelf. Our craft has been around for a very long time, and most of the information you need isn't new. I'd like to wrap up by talking about my absolute all-time favorite book. It's called Country Furniture by Aldrin Watson. And Simply, it's just the most amazing book I ever read about woodworking in my whole life. It's as if somebody set out to write one of those enormous doorstop encyclopedias and actually got it right. I think that Watson does a good job because he really sticks to pre-industrial hand tool woodworking. And that makes things a lot more manageable. But he manages to cover a huge number of topics wood harvesting and drying, sawing wood into boards. He covers benches, tools, how to set up a shop, even really complicated topics like how to set up a business and make it profitable, all in a historical context. The thing that's really incredible about the book is the illustrations. I should say that by and large, I prefer illustrations to photographs. I think they're a lot clearer. And Watson's day job was as an illustrator. So every single picture in the book is unbelievably clear because, well, he was also a woodworker, so he knew exactly what he was trying to convey. I learned so many things from this book about specific tools, period practices, ways to set up a shop, even techniques for cutting details or installing hardware. It's just the densest and most exciting book I've ever read on the craft, and I recommend it so highly. Now, Country Furniture is out of print, but there were a million copies of this thing printed. You can totally just go find it right now. And I should mention that a lot of the books that I've talked about in this video are also out of print. Books on woodworking don't sell a lot of copies, and they don't get the kind of reprints that would keep them on bookshelves year after year. But don't let this stop you. I found all of these books, and you can totally find them too. Amazon, eBay, used booksellers, Tag sales, library book sales, all of these places are filled with fantastic woodworking books. So to get you started, I've compiled a very complete list of all the books I like most in woodworking. I've got a couple dozen of them down in the description with links to where you can get them. And before I go, I've always got to thank my patrons on Patreon. Without their support, videos like this would never be possible. And to thank them, they get early access to all of my videos. They get exclusive content, blog posts, videos, sneak peeks, and all sorts of other little extras. Like all the plans I do, my patrons get those for free. So if you'd like to be part of this amazing community of craftspeople, go on over to patreon.com slash and check out the rewards and early access that I have 
just for my patrons. The holidays are winding down to a close and I'm getting ready to get back in the shop. So next week, I'm gonna be back with a new project, something approachable that you can do in your own shop. I'll see you here next week. Thanks a bunch and thanks for watching.